you wrote an open letter to Colin Kaepernick, and it's a very thoughtful letter about your perspective on, you know, sitting sitting out on the um, the national anthem from the, from your perspective as a vet and someone who's proud to run that flag out. Right, I felt uh, compelled to do it at the time. I, I did have a lot of people hitting me up about it, saying that I should say something or do something. And I chose to write, write an open letter to Colin. And I basically just what we had talked about today, you know, I kind of told my story in so many words. Yeah. This is why I feel this way. You know, this is my experience in Darfur. This is my experience in the military. But at the end of the day, like, I, you know, we took the oath to defend the Constitution, which includes the First Amendment. And, and that's something he was exercising. And so uh, I also respected that. I woke up to a full mailbox in my phone, or like a voice mailbox, and email just tons of stuff. But the, the most surprising call I got was from his publicist. Colin, uh, Colin Kaepernick's publicist reached out and said he wanted to meet with me the next day. Hmm. Um, they were in San Diego playing the Chargers in their final preseason game. It was a military appreciation night because we were, we were approaching 9-11, 15th anniversary. Yeah. They are going to do a flyover with like Navy SEALs jumping in the stadium. His whole thing, and he's going to sit on the bench during the anthem. And it's already like everybody right. knows about it. All week they've been talking about what's he going to do. And so I was like, all right, uh, is it is there like media? It's not media thing. And they're like, no, no. She's like, no, no. Because it's his publicist calling. So I'm like, right. mm, what's happening yeah, yeah. here? The middlemen. Yeah. And the she's spin like, doctors. She's like, no, no media. He doesn't want, it's not, he just wants to talk to you. He just wants to meet you face to face. And I was like, all right. I, I, I respect that in a big way. I went down there to meet him. And we sat in the lobby of the team hotel, him, myself, and Eric Reed, one of his teammates. And we had a really, it was a great conversation. So what comes out of this conversation? What comes next? Yeah, so he, he asked me, well, do you think there's another way I can protest that's not going to offend people in the military? And I was like, I thought about it for a minute, and I was like, no, I mean, no matter what you do, some people are going to be offended, I think. It, it's just... <laughs> There's no perfect protest. There's no, it's not meant to be. It's meant to be uncomfortable. Right. You know what I mean? It's, right. And it's like, I said, but if, if you're asking my opinion, I don't speak for the military or the veteran community or anybody but myself, but it's, you know, sitting on the bench separated from your team isn't the most inspiring thing to me. Like, I, I feel like you should be alongside your teammates no matter what you're doing. And he was like, I mean, I, I respect that, but I'm committed to not standing, you know, uh, until things change. I'm not going to stand for the anthem. And I said, well, then... You know, what if you took a knee? That seems like the only other option that makes sense. And now that I think about it, you know, kneeling, I mean, people take a knee to pray and propose to their future spouse. And, you know, when a player uh, is hurt on the field, the other the other players often take a knee out of respect, you know, until he's yeah. carted off or walks off on his own. Hmm. I, I just feel like that that would be better, you know, from, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but he, and he agreed.